Okay, so picking off where we left off, what we're going to be doing in this video is something a little bit different. So instead of having to go through and every time we want to update our current ammo and our total ammo, where we are going through, we have to cast our character, get our ammo, construct a string based off of it, then convert that string to text. Instead of all that, we're going to actually move that portion of code over to C++. And so that way, all we have to do is just pass in the text directly. So we don't have to do any of this mumbo jumbo. Now, the way we can end up doing that is, well, right here. We already have access to our character because we are storing a reference to our widget. So now we no longer need to get our character and cast it. So that there removes a decent bit of it. Then what we have to do is actually construct our, our string. So we're going to be doing two little improvements in this video. First one's going to be, well, you'll see right now. So first off, for update current ammo, let's focus on that first. We're going to add an input. And that input is going to be of the type text. Then from here, what we want to do is let's just call it current ammo text, like so. Now we can take all of this, copy it, and delete it. Then grab our set text and just plug it in like so. Now let's head over to our first person character where we have our update current ammo. And what we can do here is let's go ahead and really quickly paste it. We can call directly our get current ammo and have our string construction right here. So that allows us to simply create two simple functions. So let's do this one, get current ammo. And of course, because I have the name, uh, let's do it, get current ammo text. That is going to take all of this right here. So let's grab it and paste it in. Then what we can do in this function here is add an output. So we're going to return text and plug it into our text. So this one's going to be current ammo text like so. And we can just make this pure. All right. Once we have that, we're going to be doing another function. Let's go ahead and grab get current ammo text and plug that into get current ammo. Just like so. And let's plug it in here as well to this update current ammo. And now we got to do the same thing for update total ammo. So let's grab update total ammo, grab an input, and let's see, that's current ammo text. This one's going to be total ammo text. Then again, we're going to copy all this, simply delete, plug everything back in, compile, save, and create a new function for get total ammo text, just like so. Paste it all in and add an output for total ammo text. Plug it in, compile, save, set it as pure, and simply call the function, just like that. So let's compile and save and test it out. So right now we have nothing. So let's see why that may be. Oops. I'm being blind as a bat here. Let's go to graph, event graph. So currently by default, we're setting it to nothing. And that is a bit of a problem. So what we are going to want to do is delete that. And now we should have the default like so. And on begin play, basically all we want to do is just call this to update our total and our current ammo, just so it does hit that initial time so we can have the correct values. And let me space this out just a little more, like so. All right, so now when I hit play, we have the correct values. When I shoot the current ammo decrements and when I reload, the total ammo decrements and the current ammo gets replenished. So that is the first little optimization. So right there, we remove the having of casting. So basically, we're no longer getting a, you know, we're no longer having to go through the Kismet Math Library to get the first player, or not the Math Library, the uh, Gameplay Statics, I believe, to get the first player character. Instead, we have direct access to it. So we can directly call Get Current Ammo 
and get total ammo. Then construct our tech or construct our string, convert it to text, and pass it in as a return value to be passed in to our update current ammo and our update total ammo. So that right there added another layer of performance to us. Well, it gave us a little bit more in terms of performance. It freed up a little bit. Because again, casting is a little bit slow in Blueprint anyways. So now we can speed this up even farther. So in our get total ammo and get current ammo, what we can do is instead have dedicated functions for this so we can actually construct everything directly inside of C++ and speed things up even farther. So what we're going to do is create two more Blueprint pure functions. And this one's going to be of F text, and it's going to be called get total ammo text. Let's copy this. All right, let's just do this one first. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to be constructing a string and basically doing exactly what we're doing in these functions. So get total ammo text. First off, we have to construct the string. So F string, let's just call it text. Or, no, that's a bad name. Uh, ammo string, I guess that works. And we're going to set that equal to F string total ammo plus F string than it. No, it's going to be from int. And that integer that we want is total ammo. So that's going to construct our ammo string for us. Then from there, we want to convert this to text. So f text from string ammo string. Just like that. Because I don't think, is there f text? Let's see. Anything for int? No, I don't think you can really do any sort of conversion for it. But anyways, we are constructing an f text from that so we can return the resulting string. Now, ultimately, we can do this a little bit better. And instead, we can just, instead of storing our string, we can just go ahead and construct it directly inside like so. And then what we want to do, we can go ahead and make this a constant function. So, get total ammo text. It's now a constant. And we are constructing our text from a string that we constructed using total ammo colon space and appending on our total ammo value. So let's copy this and do the exact same thing for current ammo. So get current ammo. And we're going to copy and paste and do the same thing. So current ammo plus from int current ammo. I'm going to move these down right above our getter functions. And I'm actually doing that over here. Yes, I am. So let's go down to right below fire. And we'll do it right there. Okay, because we added two new functions, we got to restart the editor. Can't use live coding. All right, then go ahead and relaunch. And now what we can do is simply, well, as you can see, because we have now functions with the same name, we need to just delete them like so. There we go. Now it's no longer complaining. And what we can do is get total ammo text and just call it directly. As well as get current ammo text and call that directly like so. And now we should have the same result. Just like so. So it still decrements and it's still exactly, it's immediately responsive whenever we fire and reload. So that is the second improvement that we could do is moving some of the somewhat more, I guess, intensive logic over to C++, even though honestly it's, it's again, it's not much at all, but pretend it's something that's actually expensive to use and setting up this way to where, again, it's just going to be faster. So anyhow, uh, let's see. Don't 
think there's anything else. Uh, the only thing I'm going to actually do now is move these right to the header since they're simple enough. So for get current ammo text, we just return directly in the header. Oops. Like so. And then we can just clean up our CPP a little bit. Okay, so that's it. So we have simplified this a little bit farther. We now have, compared to the first implementation of this, drastically increased how efficient it's going to be. And I'd say we're off to a good start where we can start expanding on this quite a bit farther even. So basically what I want to do is I want to remove these events from being triggered via blueprint so that way there's no more there's no not going to be any more blueprint functions that are being called along with things being passed through our character blueprint only to be passed into our widget blueprint instead i want to be able to basically access our widget blueprint or our widget directly from c plus plus and have all these variables and or not variables but all these things a would be called directly. So again, I don't want to go from our C++ character class to our blueprint character class via events just to pass the information to our widget blueprint. So that is going to be all for this video. I'm going to stop rambling now. And if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patreons as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos such as this one. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that is also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.